wonderful to see so many smiling faces here this morning. Give me one moment, please, as I prepare. What a pleasure to be here. Uh, like Juanita said, I've been a friend of this chapel for a long time. I actually started coming when it was called Harmony Chapel back in 1982. So I've been here, this is where I first started taking my lessons and studying spiritualism. And spiritualism is the topic that I'd like to speak to you about this morning, okay? The advent of modern spiritualism began on March 31st, 1848 in Hydesville, New York with uh, the beginning communications of the Fox sisters um, with the spirit that resided in their little cottage Charles B. Rosna. Now, if you're not familiar with this story, I would encourage that you get online and uh, look at the books and, and read it. It's really quite fascinating. Um, this morning, I'm not going to go into the particulars of that. But I wanted to let you know that March 31st, 2015, was the 167th anniversary of modern spiritualism. And I know we're a couple of weeks late here, but that's why I'm talking to you today about it. Prior to the advent of modern spiritualism, spiritualism in some form has existed all the way back to the ancients, the Egyptians, the Greeks, in some form or another. And so up to the advent of modern spiritualism, spirit communication has, a, has always been a natural thing. <coughs> now after the advent of modern spiritualism, there became a need to start to organize. One of the wonderful things about spiritualism is it draws people from all walks of life. Whether you're Christian or Buddhist or Jewish or non-denominational, spiritualism has always attracted people from all walks of life. And in the early days, there got to be a little bit of confusion about what is spiritualism and what does it represent. Because all these different walks of life came together well, they brought their own dogma and creed from whatever theological understanding they had. And pretty soon, it, the waters got really muddied. So, back in 19... Let me put my glasses on. Back in 1864, the National Association of Spiritualists first came together. And again, the need for coming together and defining what is spiritualism, what do we believe, how will we... How are we going to teach it came about? And this association actually existed for nine years. And then it kind of fizzled out, and there isn't any real information as to why. It just kind of went away. Then the National Spiritualist Association was incorporated in November 1st, 1893, and recorded in Washington, D.C. So after that... We became incorporated. There was a need for defending spiritualism in the courts. The ministers, the mediums, the teachers, and so um, making definitions of what we are, what we believe, and why we believe it, how we're going to teach it came about. Now briefly, spiritualism is a science, a philosophy, and a religion. And spiritualism, spiritualism is a science because the phenomenon and communications from the spirit world have been thoroughly investigated, scientifically analyzed, classified, and found to be factual. And so the science of spiritualism is based on fact. Now when you read in the early books, uh, Arthur Conan Doyle, and you all know him, he wrote Sherlock Holmes, has a beautiful volume called Spiritual, Modern Spiritualism 1 and 2. And it goes back and gives you all the information all of how it came about, how the mediums were tortured and probed and prodded and investigated. And so scientists um, have investigated us. The uh, psychic phenomenon people have investigated us. And it's based on fact. So if you haven't studied in that, um, I, again, I would recommend to check it out because it's really interesting. Spiritualism is a philosophy because through the study of natural law and the conclusions drawn on studies are based on fact. 
The conclusions hold to be true from days ancient right through the present day. So the philosophy of spiritualism is also something that is, is some, it, it, it's real. And I have found in the years that I've been a spiritualist that not only do you start to understand it, it's a way of life. It's a way of life, okay? You have some folks that go to church on Sunday, their duty's done. But spiritualism, if you really get into it and study it and read the philosophy, take that on board, it becomes a way of life. And spiritualism is a religion because it stresses the teachings, understanding, and compliance of God's natural laws as the pathway to true growth and progression. Now, natural law, as we know, is a continuum. As above, so below. There's the physical, natural law, the spirituals, and they blend together, okay? We can't get away from them. They're a natural, they're constant, they're always here. And when we understand them, and when we use them, we find that life is so much easier. And then, myself included, when we ignore them, or we don't understand them, we can create quite a mess for ourselves, can't we? Yeah. So, the sunflower is the symbol of spiritualism. How many of you knew that? Yeah, there's a couple in the room. That's good. Well, good. I'm sharing fun information now. Now, the sunflower uh, was adopted early, early on. 18, around 1892, 1893, it became the uh, official symbol of spiritualism. And why is that? Well, in the year 1948, spiritualism was recognized as a religion in 38 nations. Likewise, while native to U.S. soil, the, the sunflower has taken root all over the world. The sunflower bloom is supported by a strong thought. Spiritualism shows that a strong character is needed to bring peace and understanding to humankind here and hereafter. The great sunflower protects the smaller, more fragile nearby plants from the harsh elements. Spiritualism provides protection from superstitious nonsense to those who are seeking wisdom and truth. And when I was in Maine a couple of years ago, we were, we were at a restaurant, oh, it's called the Maine Diner. And I think it's been on diners and dives on TV, or, and it was a really neat little place. But in the back they had the garden, and they had all kinds of sunflowers, and I was just going crazy. They had sunflowers eight feet tall, with you know, the heads on them were like this big. And they were just magnificent. So as I look at that, the great sunflower protects the more fragile plants. And it's true because it was just huge and it was towering over these flowers and it was just incredible. Healing on both spiritual and physical levels is a strong point of spiritualism. The versatile sunflower plant has many tremendous healing properties the oil, the seeds, the petals. And so for those of you that know uh, natural ways of healing, you know that the sunflower has all kinds of healing properties. Now, spiritualism has a sunflower motto, and I think it is just beautiful. As the sunflower turns its face to the light of the sun, so spiritualism turns the face of humanity to the light of truth. So moving on, we're going to talk about this morning as well the uh, principles that we went over. Because when you read them, do we really understand them? So if you have your little book and want to follow along, we'll just do a Reader's Digest condensed version if you need to share. Okay? So the Declaration of Principles, why did they come about? Well, they came about because, again, like having to organize and say who we are and what we believe, they also needed the principles to help defend the mediums and the ministers in court because these ministers and teachers and mediums were being taken to court. They were trying to put us in jail. And so having the principles of what we believe became very necessary. And again, it's not dogma nor creed. There's a difference. 
spiritual, the, the spiritualist declaration of principles is what we believe and what we affirm. And then it's up to the thinking person that comes to spiritualism whether they can take that on board or not. Okay? So our first, excuse me, our first declaration, we believe in infinite intelligence. Now what does that really mean? We believe in an all-encompassing creative energy that is the driving force in all aspects of the universe. This force or energy is often referred to God or infinite intelligence. We believe in the phenomena of nature, both physical and spiritual, are the expression of infinite intelligence. Simply put, we believe that infinite intelligence expresses through the natural and physical world, as well as in the spiritual world. Natural law assures the orderly operation of the universe. Think about gravity. You know that if I were to drop my glasses on the floor, or, or if I let go of my glasses, what would happen? Boom, they fall on the floor. That's a natural law, yeah? We affirm that a correct understanding of such expression and living in accordance therewith constitute true religion. Whew. What does that mean? We affirm that when we take time to understand the mechanics of natural law, and thus live and operate within the bounds of these laws, we can progress and move forward in our soul growth. As such, it can be understood that this is the true purpose, purpose of any religion. We affirm that the existence and personal identity of the individual continue after the change called death. That's pretty easy, isn't it? But truly, we affirm that the soul truly never dies, and that our personality and individuality remain intact after the change called death. And that's, that's really important. When you are communicating with your spirit guides or your loved ones that are over in the spirit world, it's nice to know that they still have their sense of humor or that they still love a particular song. That's how they identify. That's how we know for sure it's who we're talking to. We affirm that communication with the so-called dad is a fact, <coughs> scientifically scientifically proven by the phenomena of spiritualism. We affirm that communication between this physical and spiritual worlds is possible. It has been proven as a fact by the scientific studies of the phenomena of spiritualism. We believe that the highest morality is contained in the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Spiritualism teaches that we believe it is of the utmost importance to treat others kindly, fairly, and with compassion, as we ourselves would be treated. We affirm the moral responsibility of individuals and that we make our own happiness or unhappiness as we obey nature's physical and spiritual laws. This is one of my favorite declarations. <laughs> because we believe that each person is responsible for their own actions. We are able to create our own happiness by applying, applying the natural laws correctly, and we are also quite able to make ourselves miserable when we do not follow God's laws accordingly. And this morning, I wasn't paying attention when I was, I was driving, and I almost caused a wreck, and I know there were some <laughs> The natural laws that I violated there. One was look over your shoulder before you change lanes. Okay? We affirm that the doorway to reformation is never closed to any soul here or hereafter. Now, unlike other faiths, spiritualism is out without this fear of eternal damnation, the specter hanging about the neck like an albatross. We believe that growth and progression are available to all that would seek it out. Now, many, many years ago, when I was first starting into spiritualism, I was a, just a young thing, 19, just a young thing. And I came from a Christian background, which taught uh, hellfire, damnation, devils, and all these things that are just make me shiver now. And it took a while for that for me to take that on board 
that spiritualism teaches that there's no such thing. That we each can go and progress and become angels and higher spirits as we choose. So think about that. That's really a deep philosophical little tidbit. So this week when you don't have anything else to do, maybe you want to ponder that. That we each have the opportunity to grow here and then when we get to the spirit world, we still have that ability to grow and to seek higher levels. And the last one, we affirm that the precepts of prophecy and healing are divine attributes proven through mediumship. <coughs> Spiritualism embraces through mediumship the phenomena of prophecy and healing and accepts them as divine. So if some of you folks have Bibles, when you get home, if you'll start looking through it, you'll find that in the Bible, and some of the other sacred texts, are all kinds of examples of mediumship. There's levitation, there's spirit communication, there's automatic writing, there's healing, physical, spiritual healing. Jesus was a wonderful master teacher, healer, a divine medium who had all the spiritual gifts. So when you start to explore other religions, you can find that truth in the other religions as well. But today our talk was about spiritualism, and I hope that this will spark some interest or some curiosity to do your own investigation. Because at the end of the day, the thing that I think is most beautiful about spiritualism is we tell you what we believe, we tell you what we affirm, and then it's up to you to decide if you can take it on board.